Hey guys, it's uh, January 29th, uh, Thursday, and um, I wanted to do a video uh, regarding the little breakthrough that I had this past week. Um, I've mentioned in many different videos how I have had um, a dysphoria in the gym. And I haven't been able, or I hadn't been able to really figure out how I could be comfortable and, uh, you know, not be so conscientious and to uh, go forward and continue trying to be as healthy as I can get. So uh, I kind of just bit my lip and, and uh, started going. And before I did that, I had to ask myself, you know, how is the dysphoria the worst? Uh, what causes the dysphoria? And how, what am I going to try to um, change things? I think I just repeated myself. So what I did was uh, I did not wear the packer. And... I knew that I needed to, um, I wore bigger shorts. Well, actually my shorts are bigger because my body's changed. So what they weren't tight or anything. And I consciously adjust myself every once in a while, depending on what machine I get on. And it seems to um, have worked out much better for me. I'm not worried about it. I'm not wondering about anything. Um, I'm not even wondering if they're looking down at my crotch, honestly. So it's worked out for me. Um, you know, sometimes when we battle things and at first we may not have an answer uh, or we may not have um, different ways to approach to resolve the issue. And you just got to keep hoping and, and processing and, and asking yourself, what is it that really bothers me? You know, in some situations, it might be another person that you're not comfortable around or you're o overly comfortable and you shouldn't be or something like that. You know, you just have to ask yourself, where are you coming from? What causes that moment of question, regardless of what it is? And that's what I did. I knew it was because I started wearing my packer and I use an O-ring and a strap to hold it in place and the strap goes underneath my, I wear it low underneath my butt but on my hips because I still have some fat on my hips it does an indention and I was very very subconscious of that and Tony my wife told me that she couldn't tell but I was like I don't I could feel it you know and uh, so I so that's how I did. I had to ask myself, what was it in the beginning that uh, caused me to to stop going to the gym? Basically, come on. It they you know my girls, my dogs, always want to bark or fight each other or they want on my lap when I'm doing a video, especially the baby here. Uh, but I wanted you know when I was at the gym, I've been practicing some visualizations positive thinking and I've always been an optimistic person but I've been incorporating more and more uh, visualizations uh, and it was at that point excuse me that um, I stopped and I and I was just I left my eyes open but I was visualizing to get me through that workout and it was at that moment where I observed two different guys walk by me. One guy was all buff on the top. His legs, his calves, skinny as a rail. There was no definition. They weren't enlarged. Uh, and, you know, I see lots of guys like that that don't work out their lower body, just their upper body. And then there was another guy that was pretty proportioned pretty well. But I watched him walk out the door, and one leg was smaller than the other. But it wasn't uh, as if he worked one leg more than the other. It was almost like it was a, a leg like you'd see someone with polio or something, but he didn't limp. 
And uh, it was at that moment that I realized, and, and th this is something we all know, but do we ever really think about it? Do we ever apply it to us? And it was at that moment that I realized, you know, it doesn't matter how small or how big, each of us are born imperfect. And, uh, you know, some are born with the battle of uh, not having developed eyes or a, a missing palate or, you know, um, limbs or, you know, just anything that doesn't, your body doesn't come out 100%. And I look at my imperfection is that uh, my wires got crossed. So I was born without one set of equipment and had to deal with another set of equipment. So it was in that moment that I really realized, you know, you can really cheat yourself out of a lot of things in life just because of dysphoria, anxiety. Um, I, ha I get anxiety when I'm in big crowds and there's been times I've had to really push through it. I don't take medication for it. I I'm, I'm, I won't do that. But it, it just goes along with sometimes uh, being disabled and retired at a young age. Um, I don't know. But we, we, need, we have to dig deep in self, inside ourselves. And we really have to realize that we can say the words all we want. But we really have to realize this is our journey. No one else's. And you really have to pinpoint an issue and why you don't, you're not positive in that, whether it means going forward, whether it means getting healthy like me, going to the gym and working out because I enjoy that. And so words say a lot, but actions say more. And so if you've got if you've got a, a dysphoria or an anxiety um, regarding something in your life that's keeping you from going forward take a big step back and think about it pinpoint it and ask yourself how can I how can I change the way I'm doing something or how I'm reacting to something or how I look at something or judge something or think whatever it can be Try to find different, you know, ways of resolving the issue so that you can move forward in your in your journey happily. Uh, going to the gym, it really does it does something for me because I enjoy working out. I enjoy looking at my muscles get bigger. You know, um, it just makes me feel like I've. Um, you know, worked for something. And uh, I just wanted to share this with you because, uh, you know, our journeys are, are not, our journeys are not always about uh, testosterone and the changes, but they're about us um, intertwining into society as a new person. Uh, even though we're the same person on the inside, we still had to be socialized a certain way. Uh, we didn't fit in in other ways. Um, you know, so we're still having to relearn and experience things as if we were young. And uh, sometimes uh, we don't understand things and <clears throat> sometimes it's out of our control. But most of the time I have found in my life <clears throat> that even though the circumstance or the situation wasn't in my control, it's how I reacted or how I interacted with the situation that was in my control. So we have a lot of control over our lives. And if you're a person that sits there and wants to blame the world for where you are, you're not going to go anywhere. You got to step up and realize no one's to blame. We're born the way we are. Get over it and get to what needs to be done for you to be happy. 
and you know some people say oh well I can't get on hormones because I don't have a doctor and start working at it you know uh, don't sit and feel sorry for yourself there's always a way to work at things if you know I'm not trying to sound mean but look we all have had circumstances in our lives which could have stopped us and halted us and set us back and kept us from going forward I, I'm sure that every person has a story of some kind and uh, I just I wanted to share that to show you that it's taken me a while it's taken me a couple years but I finally worked it out and I am going back to the gym and taking it one day at a time I'm not planning ahead of the time ahead of time I'm not planning my days I go when I can go and I get done what I can get done and every day that I do that I feel more positive I feel better and I know I'm closer to some of my physical goals so that's my take on uh, what I've uh, experienced this past week um, I hope all of you are taking it one day at a time and please you know really value your journey get control of it don't let other people control your journey only one person can walk the pathway and that's you so always make your journey as simple as possible take care guys bye